Welcome back to Takis McGinnis Elder Care Law Hour. I'm Tim Takis, and in this segment, we're talking about Parkinson's disease. And joining us in this segment is Kelly Arney, who is the outreach coordinator for the Parkinson's Foundation Center at of excellence at, at Vanderbilt, Vanderbilt <laughs> University <laughs> Medical Center. It's a long introduction. <laughs> it's a long. Welcome, Kelly. So Thank you. Would you start by just telling our, our viewers about what is Parkinson's disease? So Parkinson's disease is a slowly progressive neurological disorder. Uh, it affects a very specific part of the brain that controls movement. So within the specialty of neurology, there's another specialty called movement disorder. Um, because Parkinson's disease affects the dopamine producing neurons, we see uh, a decreased production. And dopamine is a neurotransmitter, a chemical in the brain mm -hmm. um, that helps with the speed and the uh, coordination, the fluidity of movement. Mm -hmm. um, so the, someone with that specialty can uh, identify those those symptoms. So the brain produces dopamine and then somehow Parkinson screws that up? It screws it up. We're not exactly sure why, whether or not the cells die, but there's less dopamine available. Right, and then that affects how you walk, how you, you know, all those sorts of things in the, in the long haul. Yes, okay. yes. Gotcha. So who usually develops Parkinson's disease and how do you diagnose it? So um, the average age for diagnosis is age 60. About one and a half to two percent of people over 60 will be diagnosed with Parkinson's. Mm -hmm. In fact, age is the greatest risk factor. Uh, people under 50, we call that young onset Parkinson's disease. Mm -hmm. uh, so we can see a wide range, uh, but definitely aging, but it can affect anyone. It's it. Uh, is across uh, all continents, ethnicities, uh, races. Um, slightly more men than women will get Parkinson's. Mm -hmm. um, so do we know what causes this? Um, we know that it's a complicated process. It's a combination of genetics and environmental factors and lifestyle. Uh, so we um, call it a multi-hit. There may be a genetic predisposition and then other factors. We know that growing up on a farm and drinking well water, um, exposure to certain uh, chemicals or pesticides uh, can do that. But if you look at people that grew up on farms, most people don't get Parkinson's. So mm -hmm. uh, we, we just look at it um, mm -hmm. a, in a broader context. Mm -hmm. So we've been talking this in, in this show about ALS. We've been talking about um, uh, MS, and we're talking uh, these sounds like there's common diseases, or you know. And then we haven't talked so much about Lewy body or other dementias, but they all seem to be neurologically or somehow something going wrong in the brain. It, right in the brain. Um, so in Parkinson's disease. Um, we almost describe it as Parkinson's diseases because it can affect people uh, so broadly. And one of the common presentations is a frozen shoulder. Uh, we see the symptoms um, uh, come up on one side of the body. Uh, so they come up subtly and a lot of people just attribute it to aging. I'm moving slower, I'm stiffer. Uh, the tremor is the thing that's going to uh, most often disturb people and bring them to the doctor, but about 70% of patients get tremor. Uh, it's actually the less movement, the slowness and the stiffness that are going to cause disability over time, mm -hmm. and those things can be very hard to notice in yourself. Um, so caregivers are often the people that say, you know, it's really taking you a long time. Uh, but to come in with those kind of vague symptoms and get a diagnosis like Parkinson's, um, you know, can be overwhelming. And as a center of excellence, um, I'm dedicated. We have a dedicated coordinator myself. Mm -hmm. We have a nurse practitioner. We have a nurse case manager that can give people the individual attention, help them find the right resources mm -hmm. uh, for Parkinson's. Mm -hmm. You know, we often hear about Parkinson's dementia. So people probably worry about that. What, what's the correlation there? And, and that is a big fear. That uh, So I always like to tell people when we're talking about what uh, sort of run-of-the-mill Parkinson's disease, we expect to see some cognitive changes, and those are specific in the area of executive functioning. Mm -hmm. We used to say balancing a checkbook, but nobody does that. So I say working right. your cell phone or right. those remote controls at home. Mm -hmm. um, it, that is not going to be a progressive uh, dementia that we think of like Alzheimer's. 
there is a type of Parkinson's, and we'll use the term Lewy body uh, disease to uh, describe that the cognitive, uh, the memory issues were one of the first symptoms. Uh, mm -hmm. So if someone comes in with those symptoms, but they also have some tremor or slowness right. or stiffness, right. then we're going to add that. Right. So any treatments for this? Is there, yes. First of all, is there a life expectancy issue or is this fatal? Um, so we don't have a cure but we have great treatments in the okay. last 10 years great. tell us about that in the last 10 years our treatments have uh, our understanding of treatment has gotten uh, much better and uh, we can replace dopamine we know that that's what is missing in parkinson's and early on getting started with dopamine replacement we know that exercise can actually slow the progression it works with the medicine it helps the brain uh, process the medicine better so um, there's a lot of hope with Parkinson's disease and, and getting to a neurologist, if you're here in Nashville, getting to a movement disorder specialist, um, we can help you uh, set that course so that you're more aware of managing those symptoms. All right, we have about one minute left. What do you want us to know? Well, I want you to know if you have Parkinson's disease, you need to reach out. Uh, we're going to have my contact information. The park yep. like Greg right it's here. It's on yeah. right now. Um, or the Parkinson Foundation. Uh, we have an exercise class almost every day of the week. We okay. have free exercise Lots classes. Lots of resources are available and plug into the plug into your center of excellence, right? Yes. Get, get people started on that. Yes. We appreciate your time and, and your expertise on this. All Like all of our guests today, they've uh, we've had great guests today. Absolutely, so yeah. I'm Tim Takis. And I'm Barbara so for, McGinnis. And, I, and for, for, for more information about the organizations and resources that we mentioned in today's episode, please go to our website, www.tn-elderlaw.com. And so be sure to tune in again next time when we explore the many issues that arise due to aging, disability, and unexpected illness.